Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2 and I'm back again with another book review. I just recently finished Atlantia, which is actually a very short book. It's for young adults and it's a dystopian future, very much in the same um, spirit of Elysium and Battle Angel Alita. It's actually the reverse of both of those. Uh, the world down below it's actually the one where everybody's thriving and surviving and living long lives. And they all live underwater in a place called Atlantia. And uh, they have their own religion. They have their own gods based on big cats. One's a tiger, one's a lion. <clears throat> and they have these creatures in the temple, temple bats, that that was their first miracle. And... The second miracle were the sirens, and the sirens, there really aren't that many sirens left, and the main character, Rio, she happens to be one of these sirens, and <clears throat> she learns quite a bit about her her past, and her mother and her mother's sister, Mare, and I thought it was interesting that she was given the name Mare, because, well, that means, in French it means the sea, and Rio in Spanish means river. Me, of course, Bay. Obviously, her sister's name is Bay. So apparently, uh, the the authoress is a bit of a linguist. Um, <laughs> I absolutely love this book. It was really quite captivating. I just I was enchanted by it the entire time. And how the sisters keep in touch with each other later on in the book, they do by seashell. And same thing with uh, uh, Rio and Mare. And she wants to go above, and I'm not going to say why she wants to go above. I mean, the, the, the people above, they help the people below survive. It's, it's just like Battle Angel Alita. <laughs> so, only in reverse. But it's just uh, very intriguing how, how the two survive, how the two are so different from one another. But no one ever wants to go above. They, they do if they have to, and there are envoys that go above, the emissaries go above um, certain times. And uh, we learn about the the preacher or the the parson or the padre of uh, the um, the church that they have, or the, the temple. And yeah, that's very interesting. His <laughs> When they revealed that, I thought, hmm, yeah, that makes a lot of sense why he would be that way. But I'm not going to say what, because, again, spoiler alert, and I'm not going to do that to you. I'm too nice. Um, I really don't know what else to say about this particular book other than I absolutely adored it. It's very short, unfortunately. I don't think she leaves enough room for there to be a sequel, though you could make your own... Um, determination on what occurs with the with the characters and the, and their love interests um it's a very different kind of dystopian literature apocalyptic literature and i really like it and uh it tells its own story it's um really based in its own mythology that makes it even more intriguing and interesting um I like the way Ali writes. She's very, she's very um, detailed and visual in how she writes about her characters, and you you could just uh, picture Atlantia for yourself, uh, the city breathing, and I, I always thought that was so um, kind of creepy in a way, but also very beautiful. And the same thing with the sirens. The sirens are both uh, deadly. And gorgeous at the same time. They they have this unbelievable gift of their voices to uh, coerce and uh, exhort in their ways, even though it might be considered manipulation in some part. There are some that don't care that much for the sirens. They think that they are kind of um, an abomination, I suppose. And then there are the others that say, "Don't don't speak that way. That's blasphemy." They they are the second miracle, and they're still waiting for the third. Um, 
of course, something happens to Atlantia. I'm not going to say what, but it's, uh, it's actually kind of uplifting. It, it doesn't, it's not that apocalyptic literature that, uh, will make you feel this is what is going to occur with humanity. And humanity does have a chance. She, she does look on the bright side, which I like. <laughs> it's like Michio Kaku and, and his understanding of the possibilities that humanity has for itself. And I agree with Michio. Um, <laughs> this, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if it could happen or not. It's, it's a very novel idea in and of itself. I'm, Atlantis did exist at one point in time. It's, it's based on kind of on that, but it's its own world. And if you're intrigued by the whole idea of a city underwater that read it, it's, so I don't know. I, I know this is kind of out there, but Sea Lab 2020 or what is it? Sea Lab 20. 20 whatever 2020 I think it was it was one of my favorite programs when I was uh younger and it's uh it's based on a similar idea <laughs> but it's it's more tongue in cheek than this is this this is more what could actually occur and especially the deep market when they go out in the deep market with with their uh oxygen and they have uh basically a bazaar in in the in the, in the deep and some like to go to the surface. Uh, they try to go to the surface to the mines. Or the mines, they're designed so you can't escape. And it's it's built that way for, for a purpose. And it's almost like they don't have any freedom at all. They're just they're stuck there. And, and Rio especially feels that way. And it's always that feeling, well, what will become of me? What what, what about my sister Bay? I, I, when am, I, am I going to ever hear her, her voice again? And they are basically hooked at the hip. And, uh, she, she, um, she feels so alone without her and, and she, she doesn't understand how her beloved True could live without a sibling, how he could just be, um, an only child. It makes no sense to her. And I thought that was very intriguing. I, myself, uh, I can't really understand what it would be like to have another sibling. <laughs> I know it makes me sound like I'm really selfish. I'm not. I could have been a twin, which would have been very different and probably very confusing to people. But I have a feeling that my twin would probably be fraternal. That would be cool. Um, uh, but I, I do kind of understand where Rio's coming from because, yeah, I I get lonely and I, I miss... Uh, having that camaraderie that it only exists between siblings, especially identical twins, that they have probably the closest um, link between each other. And there, many times, twins are telepathic. Well, I'm telepathic with my dad and my mom, and that's another story. But anywho, they are telepathic on many cases. Many cases, they can uh, they could be psychic too. And, and that's not uncommon. And in this case, they um, they have a shared bond, Rio and Bay do. And it's really quite beautiful. And I, I really enjoyed that, that bond between sisters. It kind of reminded me of Frozen in a way. So I, I think she got it, got her um, her inspiration from that, if she did. I don't know if she did or not. <laughs> I'm just saying it just was uh, reminiscent of that bond. And I love that. I just, I think that bond is a really glorious thing. And I, I'm a big, so I'm a big supporter of family bonds. And I'm, I'm all about, I'm all about family. I'm blood sicker than water. That's just definitely, uh, that, that applies to me. I mean, any German family, it's, yeah, we're definitely blood is thicker than water. <laughs> we're very family oriented people. Um... It's basically all I can say about this uh, wonderful Atlantia. It's just absolutely, positively transfixing. And have a, if you have a chance to pick it up, do. Because you will not be able to put it down. I wasn't. And I was just absolutely uh, transfixed. I was mesmerized from start to finish. Like, by, by the siren song of uh, Atlantia. <laughs> well, I'm hoping that Dad gets to come home today. We shall see. Hopefully he does. His creatine level was lower good thing. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you other than that. That's, that's all the news I have to report for now. So until next time, live long prosper.
Jean Doble, as they say in Poland. <laughs> Good day. Bye.